Good morning, Colfax, and welcome to the show for Friday, February 26th. Today, we ask teachers to share some of the challenges they faced and the successes over the last year. Sports are back, and we have our first updates. And we look at how Colfax students took a great idea and found a way to bring it to market. Welcome to the show. As of February 14th, COVID case rates have dropped to 9.3 cases per 100,000. That puts us on the brink of entering the red zone. With this good news comes the opportunity to slowly, with proper masking, add some normalcy back into our school lives. The ASB ping pong tournament is just the beginning to what happens to be a great spring. Players are locked in and brackets will be released over the weekend for Monday's first round. There will be limited seating to watch the action during intervention, but be sure to check your flexi sketch in case you have been booked by a teacher. The leadership program asks for everybody's help with spacing and masking so they can keep adding larger events as the term goes on. And speaking of events, next Friday will mark the second Green and White Feel Good Friday of the year. The morning event will include free donuts for the first 200 students, some fun games to play, as well as you can see the third place ping pong match live. Don't forget to deck out in green and white and show how Colfax is going to rise out of this pandemic better than before. Rising up is a byproduct of a healthy community, and our teachers are the leaders of our campus. Megan dug into some of the challenges and successes of our teachers having faced over this past year and has this story. This year has been anything but normal, but that doesn't mean it's been all bad. In fact, there have been many positive changes, especially in the world of teaching. Today, as we arrive at what will have been almost one year since school shut down due to COVID, teachers are looking back at what challenges they met and how they overcame them. Uh, for sure, the greatest challenge I faced this last year is not being able to see my students' smiles and not being able to share my own. It's been very difficult when I'm used to engaging with students, sometimes just through a smile and behind the mask, it's just not there. Wow, this past school year has been full of challenges. I think, though, the greatest challenge has really been finding ways to connect with students like I have in the past. Always had the ability to kind of sit down next to them and help them out one-on-one. -on -one. And now with the dividers and the masks and half of them online, it's been really difficult to find that opportunity to do so. Engaging students is probably the biggest challenge, especially many of our students have um, wireless and technology issues and so making sure they could be connected to technology and engaging them that way that is the first step and um, I think making sure students know that they belong to a larger community um, especially when they're home alone. Having the chance to talk to teachers made one thing very clear change would not get in the way of learning. If I come across a challenge I didn't expect, I have to really stay in control of my emotions. And then also just allowing my brain to go into problem solving mode. I've learned a lot of new technology. Um, I've learned a lot of new ways to keep students engaged while I'm troubleshooting something and just keeping that behind the scenes. Similar sentiment is heard from many teachers. Problem solving and perseverance are key components of teaching this year. And while the challenges of the last year have been a focus for many, teachers aren't focused on the negatives, but the positives. One of which is their own learning. I've learned so many skills, <laughs> but most of them are directly related to technology. Um, so this summer I learned how to use Canvas. I'm far from an expert at it, but I'm adequate. And um, that, that was quite the learning curve for me. Um, I've also am a whole lot more comfortable just you know, on Google Meets. The areas that I've grown in um, would be in our learning management system, uh, taking on Canvas. I have to be a lot more organized because I can't just be me in front of the classroom and organize everything live. Um, I really do need to have tools and their technology tools like Canvas um, that can support students if they don't have access to live instruction or in-person um, learning. Teachers have had to discover new ways to deliver science labs, offer help, and administer tests. The changes have been taken in full stride by teachers who have adapted their curriculum to fit with new regulations. When you talk to teachers in person, however, it's not the changes they concentrate on, but the outcomes. But I think what I'm most proud of really isn't my accomplishment at all. It really uh, belongs to engineering art. Uh, we have been working in this ever-changing schedule, and every time we have the opportunity to meet in person, uh, the students come in just full of energy, ready to rock and roll, uh, and making the most of every minute that they have in here. So anything that I needed to get through, I did push through. 
or um, being able to provide an instruction in a clear way. Um, I've had really positive feedback from parents and students about maybe the layout of my course or the way that I deliver instruction has been really good. Sure, learning has been different, but the culture of Colfax High School in the classroom remains the same. It's represented in the science department's perseverance to hold labs, the endurance of leadership to serve our campus, and the imagination of the arts program to pursue creativity. It can be seen in every classroom, gym, and most importantly, each individual student. While it may seem everything has changed, one thing is for certain. The teachers remain committed to us, the students of Colfax High School. Reporting for CTV with camera ops and editor Mario Rourke, I'm Megan Town. I could have made that piece an hour long. And when you start adding up all the ways teachers have kept this campus open and moving forward, gratitude is the word that comes to my mind. The fact that we are on the air and broadcasting to a live audience in classrooms and at home when there are so many students that have not seen their high school since last March. It's a testament to our entire staff, including maintenance, office, grounds, cafe, technical, and academic support. Okay, just jumping on the success train, how about taking an idea, turning it into a product, and bringing it to market all during a pandemic? Would you think that's impressive, Mary? Very impressive. That's exactly what our invent team did. And freshman CTV reporter Justine Romer, along with an ABC Sacramento crew, both got out to cover this huge accomplishment. Here is Justine's story. The danger of wildfires is a real concern for people living in and around Colfax. The Colfax Invent team found a way to reduce that danger by creating and marketing the EcoBurn, a tool that accelerates the burning process of excess yard waste. So the EcoBurn is really an attempt to solve the problem of catastrophic wildfires out here in the West. Any homeowner that uh, is in threat of wildfire, which is pretty much everybody in rural California, um, could use an eco burn. The eco burn helps you to burn the fuels on your property more efficiently, so it allows you to burn clean, burn easy. With any new product, the goal is to sell it, and that takes money. Senior financial officer Nate Webb takes us behind the numbers for the eco burn. The fundraising has been really successful. We've raised fourteen thousand dollars, which is about a thousand dollars more than our original goal and we will be able to actually produce the product so that's a huge win i'm really proud of the product because i know it's going to have a positive impact on our local community and the people using the eco burn will be people that i know and hopefully go beyond that it's just a really exciting thing to see that we're positively helping the environment mr schwartz who is mentoring his third Lemelson MIT Invent team is incredibly proud of the perspective and accomplishments of the team. It's been a fantastic project. Really enjoyed working on it. I love working with the students. Um, it's great. Not only did they invent a, a product that that has a big use in our community, but I feel like the invention as well is really marketable, which I like, and I, I really am very impressed with this Kickstarter campaign that the community has come around to buy it, not only to support. Congrats to the Invent team. We look forward to seeing the sales of the EcoBurn grow and the wildfires diminish. For CTV with camera op and editor Kenny Reynolds, I'm Justine Romer. With COVID raging in December, sports looked doomed, but they're back. The first Colfax team to compete was our cross country team and reporter Charlie Satterley has this sports update. Our cross country team is currently trying to follow up their championship season of 2019 and are off to a great start as they dominated Bear River head to head on February 10th. The team is turning heads around the region in their first three races. Uh, we've had um, a couple of almost school records uh, that have come out of this season already. Um, uh, Jade Bittner and uh, Jake Colster both um, were second and third uh, is for the school record in the three mile and the 5K. With strong early performances, including two top three finishes for the women and one for the men, Colfax, who will host the league championship on March 6th, is looking to have a big season. 
competing in our championship for on our home course is uh, gonna kind of be a, a little bit of a first thing because it hasn't happened in a while. It's always been in another school. So um, the fact that we already know the course and we know what we're going into, um, it'll give us a little bit of an upper leg. Um, and it's always, it's less stressful running on your own course than any other course. Just over three weeks ago, the cross country team was training hard with no guarantee of a race. Now they have a chance to capture a championship and coach Jerry Labuddy wants that momentum to carry in to next season. To come on out and watch this race on March 6th would be great to have some support for the team and uh, any of you that are interested in competing, uh, get a hold of Coach Brown or myself. We're happy to have kids uh, for next year. We're trying to build the team and keep our momentum going. Reporting with the Colfax cross country team for CTV, I'm Charlie Satterley. We'll be keeping a close eye on the cross country team's progress, and they're not the only team racing. Our Alpine ski team has been competing, and reporter Kylie Powell hit the mountain to catch up with the team. Alpine ski is back on the mountain. The team has been able to put together three races despite a multitude of challenges. I think we've been doing pretty well for the conditions this year. They've been rough and um, I think we've been doing pretty well given what this year has bring up, brought in us. The first race was pretty rough for a lot of people on our team. Miracle did great, but I mean, it was like five inches of powder on a race course, which is not usual, but, and it was like storming, but um, I think if we get better conditions on the next race, we will totally kill it. In their most recent race, not only did Wooten ski well, but Chloe Bigley scored a second place finish, leading the women's team over Placer, and Nathan Priscilla powered his way to a top 10 finish, coming in seventh, leading the men to a second place finish, also beating Placer. At the time of this recording, the team was on the mountain running what could be their last race of the season, but they won't be hanging up their skis anytime soon, because they never know if one more race will materialize, just like the flakes of snow from the sky. Reporting from Boyo Ridge, home of the Colfax Ski Team, I'm Kylie Powell. Next show, we will catch up with the snowboard and boys golf team, and as schedules unfold, we will keep you updated. The CTV sports team will be ramping up for our first live broadcast of the Colfax versus Truckee football game on Friday, March 26th. We want to make sure everybody can tune in for the action, even if you cannot be in the stadium. There will be limited seating, and Athletic Director Justin Hyman is still working out with the CIF, the district, and the state for all of the safety requirements. The girls' golf team is looking for new players. And Megan, as a golfer yourself, you can appreciate regularly playing on two of the best golf courses in Northern California for free. We are honestly so lucky to play those courses and having a PGA pro coaching us and helping us learn the game. Awesome. Just awesome. So girls, let's go. Contact Coach Ramirez at drsmiley99 at yahoo.com. A Freddie bomb was reported in Miss J's class last Friday. Don't know what a Freddie bomb is? Check out the Colfax Instagram and let Freddie know where he should strike next. So much awesome content is on the Colfax Instagram. Mrs. J's baby pit photos alone is worth the following. And the best of Colfax recipe series is coming soon. So pick your family's favorite recipe, send it in, and leadership is going to highlight them. That sounds so good. I am definitely submitting my mom's banana bread. You know what goes great with banana bread? Coffee. The Starbucks Salute to Colfax is coming to the Insta feed soon, along with the Artist Spotlight. So when we are not on the air, tune in at Colfax High School and get some great content. That's all we have for you today, Colfax. We'll be back on March 12th. On behalf of Megan Town, I'm Mary O'Rourke. Have a good day, Colfax. That's a wrap!